Welcome to my new channel, The Dalai Lama Life. So I'm here in my office here at Dixie State. Got to go over and run to use the restroom. I know, probably, I know TMI, TMI, but it's all part of the story. So head over, use the restroom, sitting in there, mind my own business, just staring at the wall. Actually, there's a flyer on the thing. I'm just reading the flyer. Another gentleman walks in, and first of all, he violates the bathroom etiquette that happens, which is, in a guy's bathroom, guys, you, you can relate to this. I don't know, girls, it's different because you all have stalls, but we have little cubicle things. As you go in, find your urinal, head there, and if you walk in and somebody else is going to the bathroom, the bathroom etiquette says, you don't go right next to him in the next stall. You skip a stall. So you always leave a space. Now, if you're the only one there, you have to leave it open. Don't just choose the middle stall because then if there's only three urinals, you're going to have to either one or the other. You, you go to an end, so you allow yourself to have bathroom etiquette. It's just the way it goes. So first of all, the guy comes in and violates bathroom etiquette. I have left a space, and he comes right next to me. And then he proceeds to start talking to me. Just more or less casual conversation. He's like, how are you doing today? I'm like, great. And then he was like, well, I wish I could say the same. I'm like, really? Oh, I'm like, that's too bad. He's like, it's just too bad being stupid. I'm like, don't you teach here? Aren't you, or I don't know, whatever. But I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, still feeling violated because bathroom adequacy. But, and then he's coming in like feeling stupid. How many people have that same mentality. And, and that's really the point I want to get at. Not the whole bathroom etiquette, although that is important, but this idea of what is it that we say about ourselves. So recently I read a book. It was actually referred to me by a friend and I've read tons of different books on mentality. One of the most famous ones probably being Think and Grow Rich. Great book. Actually, it was a great book until I read this book and then I realized some of the truth about thinking you're rich and it kind of ticked me off a little bit but the book that i'm talking about is this one right here it's called three simple steps it's by trevor blake it's about controlling your mentality it's understanding how your thoughts actually start to manifest their physical counterpart and how your thoughts really dictate your life our thoughts create our physical reality. This book really helped me understand that. Controlling your thoughts has got to be something that you practice all the time. It doesn't happen overnight. But the payoff is, well, it's everything. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the detail of it. I'm just gonna tell you, just go get the book. You can get it off of Audible, which a great narrator. I'm an Audible snob. I've probably returned more books on Audible than anybody else. They probably have me flagged there. Because I'll go through it and I'll try to power my way through it. And if I can't handle the narrator for any reason at all, I finally just return it. I've been through this book. I'm going like probably my sixth time on Audible right now listening to it because it just keeps me going each day. So if you're starting a business, thinking about starting a business, fetch. if you're doing anything, this book will help you a lot and it will change your life. So that's my tip today. Go get this book. Okay, Three Simple Steps by Trevor Blake. I will leave the link to it down here in the comments so that you can see it, but it's awesome. I'm just here to help get results. I want to create success, more success for myself, and I love being able to teach it and understand it. I learned a long time ago in my educational career when I started out actually as a school teacher. In order to be the greatest teacher, I had to be the greatest student. But in order to be the greatest student, I also had to be the greatest teacher. When I teach, I learn, and as I learn, I teach and so that's the cycle that's one of the big reasons why I'm doing this is I do love to teach and I love to be able to learn so there's a lot of selfishness that comes into it it's one of the reasons why I still teach at the university it's not because they pay me a whole lot of money no not at all but there's a huge benefit in the sense that because we and or just me I'll get to speak for myself because I'm a teacher I get to continue to learn 
and I really get to work on implementing and practicing what I preach. So that's my goal. That's why I do this. That's why this will continue to, to go and to thrive because I love it for selfish reason and hopefully you'll love it as well and you'll continue to grow. So I'd love to hear your feedback, what your thoughts are when you get this book as you're going through it. Let me know how things are going and let me know of anything else that you want to know more about, anything that I can work on and teach. I would love to do that. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Later.